Hi everyone, today we'll be reviewing my uh, Mayakashi deck profile. It's a simple build, but I've been playing with it and it's um, very interactive, very fun for me, so I'll just uh, get right to it first. So I'll start with the monster section with um, three Hajuns, the winged Mayakashi. Um, when he's normal special summon, I can special summon a Mayakashi from my deck, except himself, which um, combos a lot into my extra deck plays. So he basically starts off my whole combo, my single climb. Um, anybody who's played with the archetype before knows um, that he's just as integral as the tuners. So that's basically all he does, really. And at the very least, he gives me um, a 400 defense <laughs> face down monster. You know, in case I get a bad hand or something. But, uh, yeah. Alright, so next we got the main tuner and star of the deck. Daki Daki, the graceful uh, Mayakashi. Um, you can only control one of her on the field, but her effects make her um, integral to the entire archetype. So, when she's in the graveyard and I special summon from the extra deck, um, pendulums, synchros, anything... Um, I can special summon her from the graveyard, and it's not a once per turn, so unless her effect's like uber negated, she just keeps coming back, which helps me do the um, main mechanic of the de deck, which um, is synchro climbing, and um, yeah, I run three of her just in case she gets banished or, you know, anything that, you know, stops her from being played, and just, it helps me, it helps the consistency, if anything. You know, just having one's not enough. Because she only goes from the graveyard. Next, we got my backup of Sukahagi, the poisonous Mayakashi. Um, he serves as, you know, the standard graveyard protector. You know, I just banish him to save uh, Mayakashi from destruction, from battle of card effects. I usually use him typically where I don't have Daki with Hajun which shouldn't happen like at all um, he's usually in my hand when I go into my combos so he serves as a great backup great protector he's my defensive option when um, the chips are down next I run three Shafus um, his graveyard effects not that potent because he well it's when he's normal special summon I can target a Mayakashi in my graveyard and special summon but the effects are negated, which um, for the synchro monsters, I'll get to in a minute. Um, they have graveyard-based effects, so it doesn't really, it doesn't really help me much at all. Um, I can't use Hajun with Shafu, so yeah. I have to be backed into a corner, or it's got to be somewhat beneficial. Like I can still synchro someone with him, so he's not all that bad, but he's not really um, that great. I still have him at three because he's a Mayakashi, so he um, fills in the slot nicely. And the last and not least of my Mayakashis is um, Yasha, the Skeletal Mayakashi. Um, with him, I can special summon him from my hand by discarding a Mayakashi, which I typically discard Daki for. Um, and then I go into Hujun, and then we uh, I get more uh, plays off of that. Or I discard um, Sugihagi and get um, protection later on. So he helps with my, he gets some of my graveyard set up. Um, built up if that means anything or I can use Yasha to discard and um, go with Shafu to bring back and just keep going from there so yeah he's interactive and, and he mitigates his own discard with the um, archetype synergy so that's why I run three of them um, outside of the archetype I run two Mizuki like I would run three but um, I didn't see a point because the deck does its own revival anyway. It's just he makes it easier. And having 1,700 attack, he's reliable. And he's just standard zombie support. And um, I di didn't feel that, you know, running three was enough. But having two serves me just fine. So, yeah. Um, as an oddball, I have Scapegoat. Um, it serves as a monster version of Scapegoat, obviously. Um, he's also a tuner. So... I get to go into my Synchro 5 plays, if anything, which helps me, you know, keep my combos going, and if I brick and he's in my hand, I still have a, um, a good defensive wall, if anything, like, 
best worst case. So I run two because three. I already have Doki, which brings himself back, brings herself back. So there's no point in me having three. But two is good enough for um, defensive and alternate synchro strategy. Next, I'm going to go into the um, spells. Um, I'm going to introduce Pyramid of Wonder. Um, I went to a tournament with Pyramid of Wonder, and people were surprised that it was in there. Um, this archetype doesn't really do much in the attack section. Like, we do have some heavy hitters, but not any, you know, like, consistent beat sticks, I would like to say. So, Pyramid of Wonder helps with battle protection, overall, you know, anti-swarm, like, deterrence, you know, instead of going up against like 17 monsters with low attack they have to focus on building a higher monster unnecessarily or ahead of time in order to you know get past you know the wall that I've set up there so I run three because usually you know it's given that it stacks it becomes a threat with um, a full board next I have the standard uh, book of life three um, just being able to pop a card from uh, my opponent's graveyard and being able to bring one of my monsters back, which activates the graveyard effects, helps me both ways. So I run it at three. Like, Mizuki revives also, but, you know, just having that graveyard interference for my opponent, you know, pushed it towards three for me. Next, I have the standard um, spell for my Akashi, my Akashi Return. Um, I could take a my Akashi card from my deck and either put it in the graveyard or add it to my hand and usually like if I don't have anything except for my Akashi return I usually go for Hajun you know and get my combo started there or if I just need you know more graveyard setup it's a very versatile card um, throughout like early stage throughout um, mid stage I would like to say so like late game it doesn't really matter but you know having three it helps with the consistency engine as well so yeah Next, I have two MSTs because I wanted to go retro, somewhat retro with this deck. Um, so I don't really have to like take care of two main back rows because you know I have a diversified toolbox in my extra deck. So there was like no point in me devoting much to back row destruction because my monsters have that handled. So I have to add a little retro flavor, right? Next, I have Pot of Inquisitiveness because um, next I have Pot of Inquisitiveness. My apologies, um, <coughs> sore throat. Um, where I was, this archetype does a little bit of banishing as a side effect. Um, I would say that it's more of a trade-off for their like diversified skill set. So I get to bring cards back into the deck to draw a card. So I get that top deck. I get to refill my um my deck but at the same time I get to bring cards that were banished from you know me pulling off my combos in order for me to um you know get me going so if anything this helps me extend my life my lifeline so that's why I have two um, that's it for the spells um, next I'm gonna go right into the traps um, I have the Mahikashi special uh, metamorphosis so I can discard one card. Um, usually I'll discard a Tsukihage or a card that I brick with that I don't really need at that point in time. And I can take a um, Mayakashi monster that's banished. So even if I don't have Pot of Inquisitiveness, this still works. Or it's in my graveyard, a special summon it. And then that um, monster can't be targeted with um, card effects. So it protects them. I get you know graveyard effects going off. Everything's, everything's Gucci with it. But then um, it all gives me, um, it's a monster reborn with benefits. I like it. Um, it's tr a trap, so if it, it's a little slow, but, you know, I'd rather have that, um, that situational uh, card effect protection, if anything. Have my effects going even on my opponent's turn, so it has, it has its advantages and disadvantages and I do believe that the pros outweigh the cons so I run at three because it's integral to the deck next um, given Savage Strike coming out I have three faithful hours 
just because I'm a lore guy and Shiranu and Mayakashi do have um, semi-connected lore. Well, it is connected, but you know, it, we haven't gotten the full gist yet. But um, it's Target One Monster Camping Normal Summon a Special Summon, and from our graveyard, actually, either plays graveyard, I believe. Um, yes, either plays graveyard, and then I special summon it. So it works for all extra deck monsters essentially. Um, my synchros, XZs, um, I would say rituals, rituals too, um, fusions. Like it works for all of those. Since this is a synchro based deck, oh, and links also. Um, since this is a synchro based deck, it, Faithful Hour can proc for any of them. So if I don't have Metamorphosis, I can go into Faithful Hour, or I can take something from my opponent's field. You know, something that was difficult, like <coughs> uh, Infinity. <coughs> you know, or something, something along those lines. So like, um, this is a new addition. So I'm running at three now, and I might make um edits later. Um. Out of the box, I have um, Ghost from the Past, so I banish two monsters from my graveyard, and then I can change an attack position monster that my opponent controls. Its attack becomes zero until the end of the turn, so it helps me push for um, for battle damage in case you know going I, like I go up against monsters that can't be destroyed by battle. There's um, I can still get that damage in, or against a heavy beat stick, you know, um, Bills for instance, you know. Those kind of guys, I can just reduce their attack to zero and then still push for game, potentially. So, and I have a lot of um, bringing back with metamorphosis and part of inquisitiveness. So, banishing two monsters doesn't really stop, you know, my flow. If I, and it gives me a, it gives my opponent a debuff, which helps me a little bit. Just a little. So, that's why I have it at two. And next, I have a bottomless. Um... I, just, I feel as though no one sees a bottomless coming, and um, I'm not much of a counter guy anymore. Like, I'm trying to experiment away from counter traps, so I try to be a little retro with my traps too and um, go with bottomless, because the destruction and then banish, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a nostalgic effect that I'm going for with this. Um, and last but not least, um, compulsory evacuation device. So, again, with the nostalgia and the um, retro effect, just um, being able to bounce a card. I know there's cards that, you know, can't be targeted by card effects, yada, yada, yada. But if, like, I were to, um, like, hit a hard once per turn, you know, at the start of a combo, then that helps me, you know, bounce, like, live a little bit longer and push for game later on, you know, sets me up for victory. And it's mostly a nostalgia effect, but it still has utility. And last but not least, the latest and the greatest, my extra deck. So I'm gonna go with um, I can't, I usually can't see his name. It's um, Oboro Garuma, the Wheel Mayakashi. So I'm sorry, the glare. Uh, the thing about the uh, Mayakashi extra deck monsters is that when they um. Anyway, so when they um, when they are they have the synchro climb um, th theme going on, so we'll get into that a little bit later. But um, basically, when Oboro comes from the graveyard onto the battlefield, um, I get to activate his effect, which is monsters I control can't be destroyed by battle. Um, Eight hundred attack level three is not really that impressive. The twenty one hundred. You know, defense gives me a little bit of a buffer, but it's the ease of his summit and the battle um, destruction prevention that um, that allows me to keep at least one. Besides, I don't really summon them often. I usually go into the higher levels earlier, so like I only need one. Next, I got Tsuchikumo, the um, poisonous Mayakashi. I like how I know um, Tsuchikage, but Tsuchikumo, but not um, Oboro. I feel bad. But anyway, I have two of him because I don't, again, I don't use um, him often. Um, and the, his eff graveyard effect is when he's um, brought from the graveyard to the field, he, I, both players mill three. And sometimes that helps my opponent out more than, um, more than it does me. So I don't see a point in having him. I use him for the synchro climb. 
um, exclusively. And um, if anything, he sits at 2,000 attack. So if I stack it with um, Pyramid of Wonders, it's still okay. You know, I'm not I'm not really complaining about it. But yeah, he's at two. He might go down um, if there's more support coming out. But that's where he is at this point in time. Next, I got Tengu Tengu, the um, Wing Maikashi. So his graveyard um, emergence effect, I would like to call it now, um, is basically pop a back row card and that's about it 2600 attack it's not that impressive but um it's great good for level seven you know and what like what else can i say he pops back row so if i hit him with book of life you know i get to hit two cards disrupt and possible two-way disruption you know it's it works and since um, I have Yasha and um, D Daki, I can instantly go into him because um, Yasha's level 5. So I get a free Tengu and I don't even have to go to Orboro or Sukuma. Now, next is my lovely lady, Yoko, the graceful Mayakashi. Um, she's, you know, pop a monster as opposed to pop a back row. Um, 29 we're hitting we're getting into the big leagues now um i feel as though that the standard for Yu-Gi-Oh, like a standard heavy hitter would be around 3,000 attack so it's still under but i have you know pyramid of wonders i know that's not what i'm supposed to rely on but you know 2900 is um is a pretty good default like considering the ease of summon you know i just docky climb docky climb docky climb so like it's it's crazy because she just ends up right there on the field. Next, I got um, Gashi Dokoro, um, the Skeletal Mayakashi, um, 3300, so um, shooting star, you know, but one level higher. So his effect is he can't be affected by other card effects. So I just summon him and ram. <laughs> like. It's, it's um, very simple, very um, beat stickish. He's a battle god. Um, so, he would be my ace, I would like to say, but Yoko's my ace because, you know, she, she has a she has a soft spot in my heart, you know. I, I, I've got, I got love for her. Next is my new addition, um, Yuki Uno, the, um, the ice Mayakashi. Ah. I just recently added her into the deck, so I honestly forgot what she does. So, while well, she points to a synchro monster, my opponent can't target her for attacks. So, that's great, especially if I have Skeletal Mayakashi, because 3300, even like by normal standards, it takes a little bit of work to get around. Especially if it's unaffected by card effects for the turn, right? So, you know, it's it, it takes a little bit of um, effort. But anyway, um... Basically, when um, a single monster is destroyed by battle or my opponent's card effect while she's on the field, I can target one face-up monster on the field. It's attack and defense become half until the end of turn. So, I would ram with just about anybody and um, reduce the attack, slam away, gotcha. Big damage all the way through. That's, um, that's nice. And besides, she has 1900 attack, which could stack with um, Pyramid very well if um, if I play my cards right. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to thoroughly play Tester yet. Like, I've, like, theory craft with the idea, but I've never really got to play her in action since I've gotten her. Um, so, I'll let you guys know how that goes. Um, feel free to let me know in the comment section how, um, if you've um, played with Mayakashi, how the interaction with Yukiuna and the rest of the archetype go. Um, and um, that's it for my deck my Maya Kakashi be sure to um, subscribe to our channel we're coming out with new content all the time not all the time but um, as often as possible so um, be sure to let us know in the comment section what you think if you have any recommendations or um, just anything to talk about just feel free to let us know peace this is bringing awesome